Some people just love poking around in graves. We don't know why, but they love it. But as far as we're concerned, no good can come from interfering with corpses and mummies. Even professional explorers, side note, how do I get that job? Have encountered all manner of terrifying oddities when interfering with deceased bodies. Strap in for a whirlwind of horrors. These are 20 mummy discoveries that scared archaeologists. Number 20, Mummy of Buddhist Lama. Students open their teacher's grave and make a terrifying discovery that science can't explain. Everyone's got loved ones who have passed away. And I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say that most of them are dearly missed. But what would you say if one of your close ones was walking the earth after death? Basically, students open their teacher's grave and make a terrifying discovery that science can't explain. Yes, that's the discovery at hand with an infamous Buddhist Lama named Dashi Dorjo Itigilov. Some backstory to him was that he was born in 1852 at Buryatia, Russia, and spent most of his life there. At the ripe age of 15, he joined the Aninsky Monastery, and that's when his religious career began to really take shape. He became the head of the Russian Buryat Buddhists in 1911. Then he proceeded to do some good with his power by healing and aiding the victims of World War I specifically the soldiers. By now, you get that he's this old, kind, wise figure from Buddhism, and he remained true to this outlook even upon his death in 1927. He passed while doing the lotus meditation position, and his last request was to remain in that position even in his coffin. This also came with one last request for his followers to exhume him after 50 years, because he claims that he will reveal something great. Well, 30 years came by and they needed to exhume his body for cleansing reasons, and it was shown that his remains were still intact. No matter, just change his clothes, then bury him peacefully again. This was done again in 1973, and it has the same results. Finally, in 2002, it's really now overdue for a Nirvana-like return. While just as he promised, it was something bewildering and great. His body has not decomposed, nor does it smell awful. People were baffled by this revelation, and soon he was permanently moved to the Ivolginsky Datsan Palace. The real mystery of this case was not his preservation, as it's probably due to Russia's cold weather, but more to the point, during his stay at the palace, security cameras have reportedly caught him moving about. Don't know about Nirvana, but it seems like he's certainly digging this new place that he's in. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Lady Rai Going down south from Russia, let's move to ancient Egypt. This one's a real piece of work because this woman is one of the oldest mummies ever discovered from Egypt. Lady Rai here was discovered around 1881, and thanks to those nerds back at the lab, they have estimated that she passed away around 1530 BC. She was also estimated to be around 30 to 40 years old, and she was no slouch either when she was alive. She served as a prominent nursemaid to a queen, which no wonder granted her such a nice sarcophagus. Not only that, but scientists said that her embalming during her death was one of the oldest yet relatively effective. I mean, the preservation of her remains were actually pretty good to the point that researchers have discovered that she had an artery condition that probably aided to her passing. Ironically, this condition was also found to be common among other conditions. Nonetheless, thanks to the resourceful preservation of Lady Rai's body, scientists were able to take a better look at ancient Egyptian times, like how they lived, what were their beliefs, cultures, and traditions. Number 18, Ramses II. Now we're really moving on to the greats. Of course, no mummy and ancient Egypt history would be complete without Pharaoh Ramses II. Ramses the Great, or Ozymandias as the Greeks called him, made himself known to the people via a series of strategic deeds consisting of divine propaganda, wartime skirmishes, and massive conquests. Let's talk about the propaganda first, as he claims to be a direct descendant of an ancient sun god. To prove this, he built many statues solidifying his godlike status and image. The cherry on top of this is that some of these erected statues that still stand today have displayed a very clever feature. That being said, there's a certain angle where the light would shine on these statues and a holy halo effect would be on full display. 
This would be an amazing tool for Ramses II to display his natural, godly aura to his unsuspecting subjects. He wouldn't be limited to building statues, however, as he has commanded the construction of countless temples that are still being studied to this day. With the subject of construction comes natural land space, and obviously, he needed more. That's where conquest comes in. Ramses II's empire would stretch out from Thebes to Kadesh. And speaking of Kadesh, this is where we get to the juicy stuff. During May of 2074 BC, Ramses II amassed his forces and made a beeline invasion of Kadesh and the inhabitants, the infamous Hittite Empire. A great battle took place and Ramses' army was at their strongest, but so were the Hittites. Some even claim that this battle was one of the biggest battles ever, that it should have been the First World War. Scale aside, both forces of each side were at their toughest, so naturally, it was a stalemate. 5,000 to 6,000 chariots participated in this enormous conquest, and they were all in a draw. So Ramses II and the Hittite king Muatali II called in what people called the first peace treaty of the world. Eventually, Ramses II's empire had a slow decline from that point. But it's not to say he didn't rule very long. In fact, it was said that he might have ruled ancient Egypt the longest a whopping 66 years of tenure. Within those years, he's given a great deal of wealth and prosperity to Egypt, truly one of the most influential people in history. Number 17, King Tut. Digging into the Valley of Kings, another infamous name is unearthed. While you're digging that tomb out, consider digging your fingers into the like and subscribe button. Isn't this video anciently glorious so far? Let us know in the comments and back to this feared coffin. This is the sarcophagus of King Tutankhamun. His reign wasn't too much to speak of, but what he is famous for are his many mysteries concerning his reign and himself. Let's start with the discovery of his tomb. In 1922, leading expert Howard Carter and his team discovered King Tut's tomb. Following this, on November 4th of the same year, they opened his sarcophagus. It was encrusted with jewels, rich ornaments, and three layers of the sarcophagus. On the last layer, this casing is made out of solid gold. Not only that, but it's also encrusted with luxurious jewels, symbols of political power, and the crests of the god of air, Amun. From the legends to the few remaining records of the history of Egypt, it was suggested that King Tut was this aged leader who dominated ancient Egypt for a relatively long time. Carter and his men would totally retract this belief upon revealing to the world what lies beyond King Tut's solid gold coffin, a young man. That's right, with many, many years of research after this event, it is now inferred that King Tut actually bit the dust when he was a teenager, 18 to 19 to be exact. According to further discoveries about the history of King Tut, it has been discovered that he rose to power at just nine years old. Imagine a nine-year-old kid ruling one of the greatest empires of the ancient world. Well, apparently it wasn't too bad because the most notable action he accomplished was that he brought back some old gods to Egypt's belief system. But that's mostly it. During his reign, it was rumored that would have been just a puppet from more experienced rulers to influence. But regardless of that, the kid died filthy rich. No one really knows how he perished, but there will always be countless rumors around it. Rumors aside, what really made the king stand out despite having a relatively uneventful life is during his Let's go back to 1922 and Carter and his mates just opened the tomb. He also opened a very notorious phenomena. That's right, I'm talking about the mummy's curse. The curse goes as if you can open an Egyptian sarcophagus, especially a pharaoh's, you're going to have either bad luck, illness, or even Heck, you can even get all three. This superstition spread like wildfire across the globe as people were experiencing the symptoms of the mummy's curse. But is it really a curse or are people just over exaggerating? Well, it turns out the curse is relatively real. Let me explain. The curse that's giving people sickness and well, that's just the unsanitary nature of opening a dude's coffin that's about a thousand years old. Of course, it's bound to make anyone sick the death part is probably just an unlucky dose of ancient bacteria and viruses. And speaking of luck, the luck part, well, that's just a chance that happens randomly. Still, despite the somewhat unremarkable luxurious life, King Tut managed to make echoes into the modern world despite being gone for thousands of years. If that isn't something remarkable, I don't know what is. Number 16, Crocodile Mummy. As if we would run out of interesting mummies to talk about. You think that the child star mummy was very outlandish? Just wait until you see this, a crocodile mummy. 
Going back to the year 1899, when researchers from the University of California were also equally shocked to find hundreds of crocodile mummies. Of course, at first, they were annoyed, but this contributes to the uncovering of ancient Egyptian mysteries nonetheless. So, now, with this discovery, what was its connection to ancient Egyptian civilization? Well, these thousand-year-old reptilian mummies were basically offerings to the ancient Egyptian deities. <laughs> Crocodiles, for instance, have been very well associated with Sobek, the god of the Nile river and fertility. This helps the ancient Egyptians to get on their good side, and in Sobek's case, probably grow strong as a nation. Nevertheless, the mummified crocodiles also helped modern studies analyze how the ancient Egyptians would mummify their dead, and from that, it's safe to say that their technique is quite meticulous. Just goes to show that even crocodiles go out in style when they're in ancient Egypt. Number 15. Mummy with Tattoo Sheesh, we've got another young in here. This is another story of a young person being mummified, but this has the polar opposite case with King Tut. Going to the far south of Egypt lies Gebelein, a relatively small ancient town. Despite the innocent looking first impressions of the town, something heinous occurred here. A backstabbing took place here, and its result is still viewable in the modern era. The Gebelein man is one of the oldest found mummies, dating back to roughly 3500 BC. This 18 to 20 year old man was the victim of an age old crime. Scientists have verified this thanks to the single stab wound found on his back. This made him succumb to the abyss. Then the hot sand helped his body naturally mummify. Despite not having three layers of coffin, being one of them made out of solid gold and blessed by the gods, the Gebelein man is one of the better preserved mummies. And you can even have a look at him. If you ever find yourself in the UK, you can find this wondrous victim lying down in the British Museum. Number 14. Hatshepsut Mummy This next one is a truly one-of-a-kind mummy. Upon closer inspection, it looks just like any other mummy, right? Have you ever noticed that most of the mummified pharaohs on this list appear to be usually male? That's right. That's because Egypt, despite being such a great empire in the ancient world, had a lot of backwards mentality, including the limitations of women. Nevertheless, this was one of the first to sever that limit, and she would be known as the great pharaoh Hatshepsut. How did that come to be? Well, it all began when her husband and half-brother, creepy, I know, Thutmos II died prematurely. At first, she co-ruled alongside Thutmos III, her stepson, but eventually she decided to take the reins. In order to do this and possibly not rupture the cultural tradition of pharaohs being males, Hatshepsut was mostly depicted as a male in several historical accounts, including writings, records, statues, and she even began to wear male pharaoh garb. Make no mistake, however, because Hatshepsut's reign was a time of great peace and prosperity. Heck, she even spearheaded the construction of several great projects, including the Red Chapel, the Karnak Temple Complex, and her very own Mortuary Temple. Despite her many marvels at ruling, she eventually died. But it's not to say that she didn't last long, because she ruled for over 22 years. The cause of death is, you guessed it, unknown. No one knows how she passed, but one thing's certain, her successors did not appreciate her efforts. That's right, two pharaohs later. Amenhotep II had a massive smear campaign against her records. This includes defacing her statues and all written records alike. <laughs> Thankfully, Amenhotep II wasn't thorough enough, and thousands of years later, archaeologists now know what really happened. Despite the solemn reign and the great architectural achievements, no other woman in the ancient world has been near to Hatshepsut's great status. That's until the infamous Cleopatra assumes power 14 centuries later. Number 13. Chinchoro Mummies Now this next one isn't but one, but a lot of mummies. Out of Egypt again, and this time we've arrived in Chile. Meet the Chinchoro Mummies. No sugarcoating here, because these mummies aren't royalty, divinity, or even child stars, but rather, they're suspected to be the oldest mummies in the world. How old? Try 7,000 years old. That's quite the estimate for these ancient beings. Apparently, these mummified remains were from normal citizens of an ancient era, and they've been described as having basic jobs, such as hunting and gathering. <laughs> Nonetheless, this is a spectacle for ancient history because ever since the Chinchoro's discovery back in 1917, they have been essential to the research of ancient history and have contributed greatly to Chile's tourism affairs. Of course, everyone would want to take a look at what seems to be the world's oldest mummies, but you'd better look fast. There's a crisis going on with these mummies, and it's thanks to the humid temperature. Bacteria has resurfaced on the damp bodies of these mummies ever since their excavation, and scientists are working hard on a solution to preserve the mummies as 
as they are. Well, if you want to see the world's old mummies, I'd suggest you get a move on before Mother Nature takes too many bites on them. Number 12. Jaya Setimu Mummy Unearthing the only one of its kind, we're in for quite a surprise. Nearly a millennium ago, riding back to ancient Egypt is a unique melody that can be heard across the Nile rivers. Is it another miraculous power of a pharaoh? Nope, it's coming from a child. Ironically, for the first time on this list, here's an Egyptian that isn't a pharaoh, but rather a child star. Yes, Jaya Setimu here might not have the easiest name pronunciation, <laughs> but her voice alone has been regarded as royalty. So royal in fact, to the literal point that she sang for the pharaohs in the royal choir. This celebrity-like status would have ensured her future, but of course, tragedy struck. You'd expect by now that no one knows how she died. And yes, you're correct on that. But like a lot of Egyptian burials, she was well-preserved. The researchers said that her body was so well-preserved, that's probably the reason on how they got an estimate on her age. Even though she wasn't some godlike pharaoh, the Chaya Setimu mummy has made her name known, even beyond the grave. Number 11, the Valley of the Golden Mummies. And just like that, we're back to ancient Egypt. This time we're not looking at just one mummy from the royal clutches of ancient Egypt, but rather we're looking at 105 of them. Yes, that's what the Valley of the Golden Mummies has to offer. Believed to have been constructed around the Greco-Roman occupation, these four tombs were unearthed. To the researchers' surprise, there was a notion of divinity. Yes, let's talk about the beliefs of ancient Egypt. They believed that the gods were not just divine in power, but also in structure. Quite literally, they envisioned their gods to have gold skin, young, healthy, and even have mostly blue-colored hair. Of course, they wanted to replicate the divine image of their gods, so they had these beautiful sarcophaguses coated and molded in gold. They believed in a rich afterlife, so who could blame them? The discovery of these tombs were not only bewildering, but they also shed a lot of light on the multicultural mix of the Greeks, Romans, and Egypt, since these were also estimated to be around 2,000 years old. Just around those foreign occupational times, despite the takeover, the ancient Egyptians really believed that if you were gonna go out, why not go out in style? Number 10. Pre Inca Mummy Stepping out of Egypt and into another great ancient kingdom, welcome to Peru. Here, we find our next mysterious mummy, the pre-Incan mummy. Yes, that title is correct. Apparently, this mummy predates the Inca civilization, meaning this guy is very ancient. How ancient, you ask? Well, thanks to the nerdy efforts of the archaeologists, they were able to make a feasible estimate about 800 to 1200 years old. Add that to the fact that when this dude bit the dust, he was around 25 to 30 years old. Now let's talk about his rather questionable position. According to researchers, he might have been royalty, a priest, or a warrior. Whichever it was, they're certain that he's of high status. Despite that, why is he tied up like that? And why is he in a shameful fetal position? Well, the best guess that archaeologists have is that it's actually due to traditional and ritualistic burial practices. Other than that, unearthing this mummy just raised more questions than answers. But isn't that just the thrill of the archaeological hunt? Number 9. Cat Mummy Whoa, whoa, whoa. The animal mummies don't end there. Next in line are the cat mummies. Just like the crocodile mummies, these little buggers were meant to be offerings to gods. Actually, thanks to these cat mummy discoveries, archaeologists have inferred that animal mummies in general were very popular during the Greco-Roman occupation. So popular, in fact. There was an oversupply of animal mummies. These mummies made top dollar, and to the Greeks, they valued them highly because of their belief that they were one of the many forms that the gods took. Taking advantage of this craze, priests would even sell empty offerings just for a quick buck. No wonder these little kitties and some human bones littered around storage spaces. Number 8. Spirit Cave Mummy time to finally fly towards the west. Here in Nevada, not only can you find the world's most notorious gambling hub, but you can actually find North America's oldest mummy. The Spirit Cave Mummy was originally thought to be 1,500 to 2,000 years old, up until further research in 1996 made it clear that this mummy was actually 9,400 years old. Now this is where it comes to play that these were the remains of an ancient Native American said to be during right after the Ice Age, meaning this mummy most likely belonged to an ancient tribe in the prehistoric era. Now that's old. Number 7. Detmold Child 
Warping back to Chile, where we'll find another unique ancient Peruvian mummy. Another contender for one of the oldest mummies ever found, the Detmold child was discovered to be about 6,500 years old. This small mummy had an amazing preservation for its small size and age. And speaking of age, it's been thought that the Detmold child was about 8 to 10 months old and it passed due to a rare heart disease. This child barely lived a life, but it's safe to say that it has shocked researchers and spectators everywhere thanks to its small stature and amazing preservation. Number 6. Soku Shinbutsu Mummies Moving forward to more recent times, we're now greeted by the Soku Shinbutsu Mummies. These South Asian mummies are very much alike Buddhist Lama Dashi Dorzo Itagilov, the first mummy on this list. The similarity is that they're of Buddhist origin, their mummification is due to self-sacrifice, and they're all doing the lotus meditation position. Buddhists achieve these mummification progresses by either starving themselves to death or by self-immolation. They believe in order to get to the state of nirvana, they have to let go of everything in the physical world, including the feeling of pain or needing to eat. Nonetheless, the mummies found in this category might be limited, but they are well preserved. Most of them are displayed in the Buddhist temples where they originally resided. While it may have been mostly Japanese cases of these mummies, the actual original is from China. It was believed that Kukai, a Japanese Buddhist monk, brought this from China after learning a lot about their culture. This sounds like an old practice, and it is, mainly because one mummified example remains. The corpse of a monk named Sangha Tenzin from a Himalayan region of India is thought to be 550 years old. Guess the practices of mummification haven't really gone away, even during these recent years. Number 5. Frozen Inca Children Hopping back to Peru, this is probably one of the best preserved mummies in this list. Upon first look, it looks like she was just taking a nap, but upon closer inspection, her skin color is heavily warped. She is not alone in this uncanny position, as two other children were found. Speaking of children, her age is roughly estimated to be around 12 to 15 years old upon and she's also been speculated to have around 1440 and 1480. Thanks to her insanely nigh-perfect preservation, she and the other children found are the center of attention and research. Samples of DNA have been collected and analyzed, and along with the found evidence of their culture, their deaths were the result of human sacrifice. They even discovered her sudden shift of meals, most inferred to be a preparation for the sacrifice on top of the 20,000-foot Mount Ampato volcano. You'd expect her to be melted because of that, but she was instead found perfectly frozen. She now helps the archaeology community discover more about the ancient Incas. Number 4. Tolund Man Another well-preserved mummy on this list is none other than the Tolund Man. This Danish man was roughly 40 years old upon his end and remains were so well-preserved as well, they could even tell what he had as a last meal. For anyone wondering, it was a barley porridge with flax seeds and some fish. Highlighting more on the preservation as a bog body, you can see the very immense details of his face. His face of probably agony, sadly, because it had been discovered that this man had died as a result of human sacrifice via hanging. But it's not to say his sacrifice was forgotten. In fact, it's probably remembered more thanks to the great condition of his body. Just like the Ice Maiden from the previous mummy, the Tolund Man graces researchers with the life and practices of the pre-Roman Iron Age. Number 3. Rosalia Lombardo Let's stay a bit more in Europe because here comes another insanely well-preserved mummy. This is Rosalia Lombardo, and she isn't ancient at all. In fact, she was born on December 13th, 1918, and she passed on the 6th of December just less than two years later. Taking a closer look, she is well-preserved thanks to the embalming techniques of one Alfredo Salafia, a master at taxidermy. How did Rosalia arrive at this unfortunate demise? Well, she was one of the unlucky people who caught the infamous Spanish flu. Her father handed her over to Alfredo and that's how she remains today. Alfredo did a fine job even preserving all of her organs. Over the years, the Sleeping Beauty here has shown a few signs of decomposition, but they fixed her enclosement with nitrogen gas and this new casing to prevent that. She may be amazingly preserved, but don't look at her too much. She has been rumored to blink at people from time to time. Number 2. Old Krogan Man Heading up north in Ireland, you might stumble upon what remains to be the old Krogan Man. Coming from the Irish Iron Age, this is what's left of the well-preserved Krogan Man. Though it may be only a quarter of a man, years of research has perceived that the Krogan Man must be of high status. This is thanks to a few things found on his body. Greatly groomed fingernails, indicating he did nothing very physical or dirty, and an arm ring. 
This arm ring isn't just any ornament, but rather a religious artifact of worship. This leads to believe that the Krogan man was actually a druid at the time. That explains his drip. And just like most entries on this list, no one knows how old Kragi here passed away. Some say he was tortured, others say it's another result of a ritual sacrifice. But no one knows for sure. Despite his limited remains, old Kragi has helped shape the discoveries from the Irish Iron Age. Hopefully, we'll know how he passed eventually. Number 1. Screaming Mummy And last but not least, the Screaming Mummy. Ending this list with a banger, we're headed back to Egypt. Now, this is not known to be a pharaoh but rather a normal female Egyptian. This screaming mummy is sure to put the goosebumps on anyone who stares long enough. But why was she exactly screaming? Some say it was a murder. Others say it was the result of a torture. But what did the scientists eventually say? Well, after an extensive and closer look into her body, researchers have concluded that it was most likely due to a heart attack. Yes, traces of an unhealthy lifestyle and a plaque-ridden heart shows that this banshee might have been screaming out in pain during her last few moments. But that's mostly what the scientists can infer because they're not too sure of her real identity. She might be actually a queen that was forgotten to be properly mummified, but whoever she was, her screaming fate has been sealed. Are you all ready to exit that desolate tomb? Which of these mummies made your spine shiver? Let us know in the comments below. If you're raring for more of our videos, make sure to check out the videos in the cards now. You can also look at our other interesting videos on the screen. screen.